Do you think the ghosts of old Cornish miners hang around down here? Um, I wouldn't be surprised. A lot of them are buried in here, probably. Uh, that's a little morbid. <laughs> a little bit. But true. But true. These are the tin mines. Here, the mine actually tunnels under the seabed at a 45 degree angle. Queen Victoria herself came to visit this mine after an accident that claimed the lives of several miners. And these caves is that, uh, that's all part of their system. Is it Industrial Revolution era, uh, medieval era? No, no, it's probably uh, going right back post Roman. Okay. Welcome to Cornwall. We're looking at a nice muddy wall of uh, probably iron. It's very strange. This is probably some of the oldest tunneled mine workings in uh, the west coast um, Cornwall, right near the end. And this possibly go right back to Roman times or even slightly earlier. There's no dating evidence. But, uh, people looking at them, uh, mining people and archaeologists, are starting to scratch their heads and wonder the age of these. It's pre-black powder, there's no blast marks. There's no pick marks either, even when you go further in. So it must be of some great age in mining. Remember, you've had people mining here for 4,000 years. They've been after the metals trapped in the ground. What did you say the name of these mines were? Bunny Grills. Bunny Grills. That's it. Wait, That's like it, the... Bear Grills. As in Bear Grylls. Yeah. And the town is called Batalic. Batalic. Like, pronounced like metallic. Yeah. And here we were saying Batalac. Yeah, but you're American, so you always do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. There's another little tunnel popping through here. There's tunnels all over the place. Forge, you don't add in to eat too much for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, Neil, you must not be claustrophobic at all. No, I'm safe in here. I don't like, I've been very small mines. Yeah, they're scary. When you've got a six inch gap to squeeze through. A couple of years ago on vacation in Utah, I went through some lava tubes. And there's just, you know, they'll, they'll be like four feet wide, but there's just a foot, a foot and a half of, of, of clearance space in most places. And so you're just, you just army crawl your way through and that, uh, I did it, and that was that was about the smallest space I've been in, I think. But all the things that make me a bit more nervous are also the things that make it work that are a bit more fun. Wow. Oh, that see, fell down. Just a, a tiny bit of vein. Oh, I see. Oh. On the left hand side. Well, there you go. Wow. So that's, that, a, that's a little vein of tin. Possibly. It's possibly. most unlikely. There's a limit to how much they can take out, because they've also got a problem with this hanging there. So it goes all the way under your feet. And there's this one. And you can see the corresponding line across the beam. Wow. We are in a vein that's been extracted. It's right next to the beach where we're smelting tin with, with Neil right now. I keep uh, scanning the walls in vain for uh, traces of tin. Of tin. Goodness gracious. I think I've probably had my fill. Yeah. Let's say we turn back. I'm a little curious. I'm going to go just a little further, I think. Okay. I'm, uh, my sense of claustrophobia is... Well, it'll come in in just a second. Especially when I look back, I can only see your light. I can't see anything. Well, there's a glow in the wall. I can't even see the bottom of that shot. So as far as I can tell, you're safe until you get to me. And that's... And then I have 
advise you to get a nice, good grip on your phone. You drop it, I'm not going in there to get it for you. Uh, this is a little slick. Watch out. Yeah, the, the floor doesn't seem too bad here. But I don't know about these two rocks, so I really don't want to get any closer. But if, if you'll let me get it out of the way, I'll let you go and look. But I think if you... Well, I would just not get too close. That's, that's my opinion. I didn't get too close. Wow. They call it a mine. A, a mine. mine! Soon we will be treated to the legendary hospitality of the dwarves. Oh, you know, oh no, that's just water. I thought I found a... Sure, we got a tin. Here lies Balin, son of Fundin, Lord of Moria. Then it is as I feared. I can't cry like Gimli, though. They have a cave troll. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, do you think that's a vein? That looks an awful lot like a vein. It might be a vein. I don't know if it's a vein, but Shall it looks we, uh, a lot like a vein. 4,000 years ago, people uh, started off walking the beaches, looking for the rock, and once they collected all of that from the valley, then they'd start mining. So mining's a bit later. Okay. Um, they'd follow the veins in, and you've seen the veins on the hillside. Just chasing that through the mountain. Yeah, just follow the veins through. And the technology to pursue this develops, and that's why Cornwall becomes a center of mining technology. The mining technology builds and builds and builds, so even by the time you get to the Klondike, all the technology there is Cornish. It's amazing. The mine stamps, all the equipment, it's all developed in Cornwall. And, and that's why Cornwall did so well with steam, because the steam engines were used to pump the of water the water out of the, out of the mines. mines, and that's why steam develops so quickly yeah. in Cornwall. So it's amazing the effect uh, mining has on the world today. Yeah. But it all starts with somebody getting out of a boat 4,000 wow. years ago and picking that up. Thank you. We are super grateful to Neil Burridge for showing us around the mines and also for smelting tin with us on the beach. Check back soon to see that video, and if you would like to see us work, check out bronzeageswords.com in the link below. Far over the misty mountains cold To dungeons deep and caverns old we must away ere break of day to find our long forgotten goal.